Have you ever wondered just how good a battery is on a modern day e-bike? How far can you realistically ride? Well, today I'm gonna put that to the test and I'm gonna find out by riding from my apartment here in central Manchester. I'm gonna try and reach Pritchard's house. He lives about 60 miles away down in Derbyshire. Now, if you know geography in England, you'll know that there is some quite challenging terrain between Manchester and Derbyshire through the Peak District. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And this is gonna be the bike that I'm using. It's the Ribble CGE E for electric. We've got a full battery, a full charge. So let's get it going. Now I've got three things on a checklist that I need to complete whilst on this route down to Derbyshire. Firstly, I need to get a picture in front of the Old Trafford Football Stadium. Secondly, I need to find some Buxton water in Buxton. And finally, a Bakewell tart in Bakewell. So we're only three kilometers in, and I think I can already see Old Trafford in the distance. Yep, there it is. All right, there it is, the theater of dreams. I'm gonna quickly grab my phone and we'll get a selfie in front of the Old Trafford Stadium. All right, done. Nice and easy, first one checked off the list. I suspect the next one's gonna take a little bit longer. This route is a mixture of on-road and off-road. I thought whilst I've got the gravel bike in my possession, I might as well do a little bit of off-roading. On this bike, there's three different levels of assistance, green, amber, and red, and they progressively get more and more powerful. I'm gonna do the majority of the flat riding in green, and then where appropriate, for example, on the longer climbs, I'll increase the power, increase the assistance. I've got a little bit of competition on the other side of the canal. Here we go. Go on, lad. You need an e-bike. It's officially the 10th of March today and it is snowing. It's actually snowing. Yo, England, are you good? <laughs> All right, we're at the 20 kilometer point. We're just about getting outside of Manchester now. We're in Hazelgrove. So far, we've still got battery level white, which means 100%. But there's a couple of things which I think might test the battery, which is gonna be interesting to see. Firstly, it's a complete block headwind the whole way to Pritchard's house. Secondly, the weather is flipping freezing. It's currently minus three. And traditionally batteries, when it comes to phones, cars, don't perform as well in the cold. So yeah, see how we get on. See you in a bit. So we've just arrived in Whaley Bridge, which is at the bottom of Long Hill, which is appropriately named because it's a long hill and it's the longest of the ride today. It's about 10 kilometers in length and the top of it is the halfway point of this ride. No doubt it's gonna take up a lot of the battery. Okay. Woohoo! Yeah, we're on red, we're on turbo. Oh man, that feels so much faster. It's starting to get real cold. And Wahoo says that we're at minus five right now. And we've just lost one bar of battery. That means we're down to 75%. We're only about one or two kilometers into the climb. I can really hear the motor having to work hard. Uphill into a headwind, but we're doing it. We're moving. We made it to the top of Long Hill. I'm just gonna briefly stop here for a minute. It is minus seven currently at the top of here. It's, it's March. This is horrible. The bike's holding up well. Still on green battery, which means we're on three out of four bars, but I'm gonna descend now down the other side of Long Hill. At the bottom of the other side of Long Hill is Buxton. And that is where we can complete the second checklist. We are officially in Buxton. I'm just gonna try and ride around now, find a shop so we can replenish our water, get some Buxton water. Found them at Coles. They're bound to do some Buxton water. Let's try and do this as quick as possible so I don't have to get too cold. I don't think they have any. I actually cannot believe that. I thought that was gonna be an easy one. How can you have a shop in Buxton and you don't sell Buxton water? How does that happen? But the journey continues. Let's try and find the next shop. Just as my route was taking me out of Buxton, I came across this garage 
and it was my last ditch attempt and thankfully they had some Buxton water. Tastes like water. Distance update, 60 kilometers down, 40 more to go. We're still on green. And I'm gonna be honest, since that long hill climb about 20 kilometers ago, I've just had the bike constantly on turbo, constantly on red, just to maximize and try and get there as fast as I can. But look at this, I'm literally riding on snow. Better put two hands on the bars. Look at this, it's a bike lane through a tunnel. This is incredible. And it's a nice welcome break from the snow. I've just come off this bri bridle way there. We run it for about 20, 25 kilometers all the way from Buxton here, where we finally made it to Bakewell. The final challenge for the checklist is to find a Bakewell tart made here in Bakewell. I'm thinking the best chances, the best possibilities of finding one at this time of the day, it's like four or five, five o'clock. It's probably gonna be a bakery, but yeah, hopefully we can find one that's open. All right, on to the next one. I mean, we've still got 25 kilometers to go and I don't want to be hanging around here too long. So we're going to give it a little bit more time. Hiya, hey, could I get a small Bakewell tart, please? Yeah. Just as I was about to lose all hope, I managed to find a bakery that was still open and we haven't gotten hold of a Bakewell tart. I don't think I've ever tasted one of these before. So let's give it a try. Mmm, so good and tasty. I mean, that, that's pretty good. My first Bakewell tart experience. I'm gonna give that a solid eight out of 10. We're making good progress. We've still got a decent charge, but the only problem we're facing now, because I spent some time riding around Bakewell looking for this tart, we've wasted some time. I've got 26 kilometers to go until Pritch's house, which is about an hour of riding. And it's nearly five o'clock, which means we've got just under an hour of daylight left. And I've only got a backlight. So we need to go. The final climb of the day is approaching and I'm guessing we're climbing to the top of that. Just as the snow starts falling again, we're about to arrive in Pritchard's town. We are 2.9 kilometers away. I can't wait for him to make me a cup of coffee after this horrible freezing cold bike ride. <laughs> now unfortunately after this I ran out of daylight and I had to return the bike to Ribble the following day so I couldn't complete this challenge. But when I arrived at Pritchard's after riding 100 kilometers I had 50 percent left on the battery and that's from riding the majority in the fastest mode. Now the way the bike works is when you go over anything around 18 miles per hour the motor cuts off and therefore isn't engaged the whole time you're cycling but I think for the purpose of this video I think you could comfortably do 160 to 180 kilometers in the most powerful setting with this bike over you know a rolling terrain which I think is super impressive considering the bike doesn't even look like it's got a motor and a battery attached to it but that's all for today and I'll see you next week.